mean uh, to them. Uh, let's ask uh, Connor Tomlinson, Conservative uh, commentator. Uh, Connor, Connor, really good to have you uh, with us tonight. Why? Why now uh, a U-turn from the government, do you think? I wouldn't... Well, thank you. First of all, good evening. Uh, very happy to be on the show. I wouldn't be surprised if things like the recent protests in France play a very large role in the government's concern about the level of backlash of this. A lot of clips have been circulating where people have been having open street fights. They've been uh, very heavily attended. There's also been a similar, obviously non-violent, um, unless you count a couple of skirmishes with police, uh, uh, instances of freedom protests happening in Britain, and they fear that these will intensify. Sorry about that noise. Um, in the coming days, uh, obviously they've been regarded as deeply discriminatory because of the different disparities in vaccine uptake between different minority groups, and also the pure principle of inverting the relationship between citizen and state in saying that England has a, a history of being... Um, a, a watchman state rather than asking permission from the state to access your civil liberties. Uh, having a vaccine passport would fundamentally invert that and it would stop um, citizens being able to go about their civil liberties without asking express permission for the state based on the medical status. So I think it's a, a, a sort of consolidation of the backlash and all of these fairly level criticisms, especially lots of come from talk radio in recent days, that the government's probably stepped off from that. Yeah, and we also know Boris Johnson does not like any kind of infringement to civil liberties. He's a libertarian, isn't he? Uh, um, I think he's about as, as libertarian as, um, as uh, well, <laughs> I probably should make that comparison, actually. Um, in all fairness, yeah, obviously, ages ago he said, oh, he'd, he'd happily eat an ID card with his cornflakes, but that's because they're being proposed by the other side of the aisle. I think that's more uh, rhetorical flourish and, and a bit of party politics and anything. I think Boris has backed up his principles pretty substantially, and he's, he's now being governed by the panel of so-called experts um, who have their own political leanings and obviously can't differentiate their personal politics mm. from the, the so-called science that they appeal to as, as an impartial arbiter but obviously science also isn't settled it's, it's constantly uh, uh, changing all the time and we see that with the the uh, child vaccines for example of where they're pushing through um, a particular policy when the actual uh, uh, panel who was advising whether or not the vaccinations was was suitable for children said oh the jury's still out on that and they said oh well we'll weigh up other factors well it's like oh thank you for weighing up your political factors but you've been appealing to so-called the science the whole time as the reason why you have to have to do things and say oh we can't rule anything out as a I believe Sergeant Chavez said earlier, he said that we can't actually rule out the policy for use in the future, but we just won't use it now. And it's like, no, stand by your principles, stay, take it off the table. There's no scientific backing for it, and there's no moral backing for it. So what does this, how does this make the government and Boris Johnson look? As you, as you say, so much conflicting uh, information coming from scientists within the same, within the same uh, group, you can argue. How does it make the government look one minute uh, saying one thing and the next something else? Well, I'd say, particularly for the economic recovery side, it makes them look incredibly precarious because as much as they want to say, oh, they, they, have, uh, they have free principles as the Conservative Party is supposedly purport to do, uh, particularly Boris is a libertarian. I have people that, friends that work in the nightlife sector in some of the more uh, uh, prominent stadiums and putting on uh, things like concerts and sports events and that. And they said, we've already thrown a lot of money down the drain, a lot of planning and a lot of effort into actually seeing how we would make these systems work. Uh, preliminarily to the government introducing it because they kept saying will they won't they will they won't they and now given that our cabinet seems to be as leaky as a colander lifeboat every time these about faces on policies happen they usually leak through on the press agencies first and then and then confirmed later so that means that um all of these businesses are on a knife edge with with this uncertainty as how to act from the government also it shows that they've got no moral principles because having having if everyone says okay Oh, the government's just gonna, just gonna, never gonna implement this in the first place. This is all just to scare young people into getting the jab. It's pretty crazy that we're actually so, um, uh, it's almost like we've got Stockholm syndrome at this point, that we're so okay with the government continually lying that we just wave off a, an infringement of civil liberties as, oh, they're not gonna do it anyway. They're just lying straight to our faces. Well, the lying straight to our faces, two wrongs don't make a right. If you're trying to increase jab uptake, you don't threaten a, a sort of Damocles, an infringement of civil liberties hanging over someone's head. That doesn't make it okay to just lie either to get what you want stick by principles and, and don't deceive the public. And I think the trustworthiness, as we've seen by recent polls, see, um, even the Westminster voting intention that Labour's actually eclipsed the Tories in the last week, I think that's part of the, the fear that they've gone back on this policy. Um, people are starting to really have, have their faith shaken in the government they voted for. Yeah, I was going to say, how, how damaging do you think this is? Would it be best not to start touting it? Or just, yeah, the back and forth. Yeah, how damaging would you say that has been? I would say, well, the, the fact that they haven't been able to take a principled stand on it and say, hey, no, this was always going to be off the table. Um, uh, we, we, as you said, when you were with Nadim Zahawi, um, he was happy to say, oh, we're absolutely never going to do this, and immediately about face on it and say, yeah, yeah, we've been, it's been in the works for a while. Sorry about that, lads. Um, it doesn't show that we can, we can trust the government that we particularly voted for. Um, and it, I would say it's, it's particularly damaging in that if you're asking people to operate on your way of pulling them out of the pandemic recovery, if they can't even trust 
the ways in which you're, you're, you're saying, oh, this is absolutely so immoral that we would never do it, and you've actually been working on it for quite a while, and then you're going to reverse it, just saying, oh, it's not necessary right now, but we might do it again. The, the businesses can't operate off of that uncertainty, and it, it is going to be electoral poison at the ballot box for people who want strong principled politicians, which I think is most Brits. So how... How do you think the government can come back from this? What can Boris Johnson do to, to gain to gain that trust? I would say a significant cabinet reshuffle. I know there's been a lot about that in the recent days. Yeah. Um, currently, it seemed like, as, as there's lots of rumour mill flying around, um, some of the more locked down hawkish MPs seem to be staying. I understand that there's some internal politics about some of the more favoured MPs by the more socially conservative, um, particularly the commentator sphere. Uh, people like Liz Truss and that might be on the out. I think that would be a pretty grave mistake. I think uh, people like Michael Gove, who a lot of people have had a, a lot of skepticism about, um, uh, same with Matt Hancock, who was on his way out. He was pretty much, you know, uh, beyond beyond his awful snogging technique, he was um, he was a sort of architect of lockdown mm-hmm. policies. Lots of people applauded him walking out. I think if if Boris really wanted to reinstall the faith in uh, governing as conservatively as his Get Brexit Done slogan purported he was going to be, he would instigate a cabinet reshuffle and and put principles first rather than seem to give jobs to his mates. Yeah, it looks like uh, it looks like Boris Johnson and the government not doing themselves any favours at all. Connor Tomlinson, a Conservative commentator, really good talking to you.